All right, let's uh let's switch over to the other source. All right, power of paint. Let's make the music a little bit more appropriate. And away we go. A little bit up on the volume. Okay, good. All right. So we finally got another collab. We weren't sure if we were going to get any of these. Uh, it looked like the Puzzle and Dragons was going for a record of things that North America might miss. Um, because <laughs> we, maybe we'll get Gundam too. But we thought this was going to be number two in a row, and it turns out it wasn't. Uh, we obviously missed One Punch Man. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of the elephant in the room. This is a 10 stone machine. This is a 10 stone machine. Seven stars at 15.5%. We'll get it here above chat. And then six stars at 24%. And then five star is an astounding 60.48% of everything you're going to roll. So there's some pretty funny memes about like gold eggs. You're gonna be shoving a bunch of stones in this machine and getting 10 and getting gold eggs more than half of the time. So it's a little bit less than two and three to get a gold egg. Now the combined rate um, of the seven stars and six stars, you've got about one in six and about one in four. Now it is nice because in some ways that this is a 10 stone machine because you could actually trade up some of the six stars for some of the seven stars. So if you just kind of think about it a little bit like that, your rate is a little bit better for a seven star so that you have this pseudo rate of about one in five, but it is a 10 stone machine. So that means one in 50 stones, you're approximately collecting a seven star. Now, also, uh, I'm not, I didn't do any like really strict math on this, but if we were to like, Think about this in terms of probability and statistics if you wanted to reach a 98 percent confidence level that you'll hit this one in five rate you have to spend five thousand stones you have to do approximately 500 rolls to get a 98 percent confidence and what 98 percent confidence uh means is that if a hundred people rolled five thousand stones worth in this machine 98 of them would get approximately these rates. Now the other 2%, the other two people might get crazy good rates or crazy bad rates. That other 2%, crazy good, crazy bad. Now, no one's rolling 5,000 stones in this machine except for maybe Acid. He might have rolled that many stones in this machine. But realistically, uh, people are gonna be rolling two to 300 stones in this machine. And with how expensive this machine is at 10 stones, let's turn this down a little bit. Let me know if it's too quiet on your side, but it's too loud in my headphones for me to like talk. So um, at 10 stones per roll, your variance is gonna be really high. Even at, if you spend two to 300 stones, there's this not bad chance that you literally get nothing. You won't even be a statistical anomaly at getting zero seven stars and 200 stones. You're not even a statistical anomaly. You're pretty unlucky from what I was looking at. It looks like you should definitely get one seven star and 200 stones. Usually two. Usually two. And if you get reasonably lucky, you'll get enough six stars to maybe trade up for one. But would you want to do that? Maybe, maybe it kind of shores up the exchange a little bit. Um, I could pull up the exchange rates at the end so that we could look, but they, they'll, they'll be here. 
Uh, I guess maybe if you're concerned about trading in Draconic Orchestra, that might change your little mind a little bit. But we will definitely take a look. All right. So the orb skin, I'm pretty sure in this bundle is Rohan Kishibe. So Rohan Kishibe, I'm pretty sure is the orb skin. And no, which one's the orb skin? Rohan's the black metal, right? Please don't trade Draconic Orchestra. There's a couple good cards in Draconic Orchestra. Uh, Eva on the flute is pretty good. Uh, I forget which one the orb skin is. I know Dio is the background music, right? Oh, part one Dio is the orb skin. Is there not a BGM in this one? Maybe I'm tripping. I don't have a pad product page to revert to. You think Giarno is one of them? Oh my. Okay, let me look this up. Uh, where did I have it? I had a page up. Uh. Tawaldo. Okay. Let's see. Pad pad blah. Okay. Dio is the orb skin? But why does it have Hmm? Not sure. Okay. Well, I should have thought to look that up before starting this. If anyone figures it out, then let me know. Okay. So let's uh let's go through the, the card list and let's kind of rate these on an S to C tier with a bottom bottom tier at 10 minus 10 magic stones kick W. Uh whichever one is the orb skin, this orb skin is bomb fire. This might be the best orb skin they've released. It looks great. It's it's plain at the edges, so it's easy to see. It's not like the crazy characters. And it it changes the heal orbs. It makes them look really nice. This is a really, really good orb skin. Bound, oh, sound balancing and music's really bad. Oh, yeah, you're right. Jolene is the orb skin. Dio is the BGM. There you go. You're right. Paper Fenrir's got it. I will definitely be picking up the orb skin. This is a nice orb skin. If I don't get it in my like initial rolls, man, it's so it's so good looking. All right, I'm excited for the orb. All right, all right, let's just go down the list of seven stars. All right, first we got Jonathan, or uh, as it seems people are kind of calling him, he's a uh, Leo two, and I think he's on this page. Yep. All right, Joe Nathan Joe Star. Uh, for two turns, bypass void damage shield. Uh, for two, two for two turns, five X attack for this monster. Unlocks all orbs. Changes top row and second. Bottom row. Oh, wait. Changes top row and second to top row to fire orbs. So he does the opposite of what Shivadra does. Um. Okay, I I, I like this eight turn cooldown. Cooldown's a little high. Reduce damage taken by 75%. One additional true damage when matching. 35x multiplier, essentially. Good multiplier. Built in OEs are, is nice. He's double attribute. I don't think he's better than Leo, though. He is a really good void pierce, and he, and he just fits in really well. It's a two turn. I don't think he's better than Leo. Really good though. Yeah, uh, like this is optimal for a lot of content, right? So yeah, this is good. Already uh, th gonna probably place him pretty high. Um, just because we're comparing him to Leo doesn't, and saying that 
he's not as good doesn't mean that he isn't potentially s tier because leo is an s tier card all right his evo two turn cooldown three firelight and heal orbs and then hp conditional doesn't unlock or anything else triple tensi door leader skill firelight Eh. I mean, he is a 4.4 XHP, but only for attackers. This is less good unless, like, this becomes something. And then it gets becomes much better. Fire and light. Yeah. All right. Equip. Uh, For three turns. MC, Devil Killer, Finger, Fine Resist. 16 turns for three turns of bypass damage absorb and attribute the other stuff doesn't really matter like this is okay it by it bypasses some mechanics but mm. okay i think uh i want to put him in our a for araki tier. i don't think maybe we'll move him up I hopefully he's not the S tier of this. He is really good and he might be the card that people exchange for. But I don't think he's like crazy. Okay, next up is Jolene. This is the orb skin bundle. All right, where is she? Jolene. There you go. Man, her art's great. Okay. Uh, oops, all damage. She is just only damage awakening. So I guess she transform. Oh, she's a transform. So she only has one form, I guess, right? Three X move time, three X damage. So meh transform. She has three skill boosts. It's not terrible. 22 turns. A serviceable shield before transforming. Braces are capped. Okay, so how much does this multiplier give? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right off the bat, it's a 1.7x multiplier. Uh this is a pretty good damage loot. It, you need two of them, but maybe you don't need it. Maybe you just want some low cooldown uh, damage amp, RCV amp. Uh, when matching four, so okay, so you need to match a TPA. Three colors, three colors. Okay, very versatile leader skill. Seventy-five percent shield. So she's sitting at the four X effective HP. With a very versatile leader skill. This is really weird. Seems easy to forget, possibly. But uh, this multiplier is a little low. 23x is a little bit low. But they always kind of do this to leads that can damage it. I mean, that means that she's better as a sub, but then you run to. This is probably like if you're new for people who are new to Puzzle and Dragons, this is a fantastic pickup. If you could get a little bit of um of support from other cards to kind of like get it transform and make a rainbow team, then so that you could get the 22 SB, you're good to go. So you almost always have three colors on the board. Almost always have three colors on the board. So this is a great leader. And and just remember, it is 22 turns, but she actually has a perfectly serviceable leader skill for most content at 65 eh, pre-transform. So she's quite good. All right, let's take a look at her equip. What's it call it here? Stone free. Okay. It'll be probably called Stone Ocean when it gets translated. All right, uh, for three turns to absorb move time for three turns, reduce 75% Stotion. 
for three turns, seven by six board. Eh. I, I, seven by six board changers are, are super weird. It's not terrible. Three X, uh, are you, you've got the three color awakening, uh, three team RCVs a finger. It's an okay equip. Uh, I think Jolene is a solid B tier unit. Me, her primary appeal for pickup is her orb skin is just solid B. All right, uh, let's jump to uh, Joseph. I'm sad we don't get old Joe. Young Joe's cool and all, but I want old Joseph. Oh no! All right, uh, for one turn, 5x. Spinner unlocks all orbs, changes water orbs to wood. Uh, this is weird. On a three turn cooldown. Yeah, kind of meh describes it. Uh, he's got a nice utility of awakenings, possibly um, poison resist and jammer resist and four TPAs, meaning he could be used for unmatchable with he's got two colors across him. So possibly a good uh, uh, unmatchable card. Let's see his leader skill 75% when matching two wood combos. Okay, like, hmm. I mean, this is an okay leader skill. It's not great though. All right, Evo. Really nice art. I love the the text. Cool. What's the name of this card? Shrewd Tactician. Okay, we flipped over poison for blind. Changes all orbs of wood, dark, and heal. Enhance orbs for two turns. Bypass void. Okay. Um, not the best active skill, but it's pretty decent for what it does at nine turns. Um... He is a scaling wood dark and heal leader his only problem is is that he doesn't like have a base multiplier that he procs off of but if you do man and then like if you do five wood five dark five heal that's only a 27x multiplier so you really need to hit four once you hit four though you're you're hitting really hard I don't know about this. All right. Did this it said cracker volley. Does is that what it's gonna say when I translate this? Oh I thought it was clacker. But the R is questionable. For two turns, bypass damage void shield effect. Unlock all orbs. This is an amazing active. It's so cool. This is such a cool active. I love it. Okay. This is great. Um, double TPA, green change. This is not the best awakenings, but the active is really good. Um, the active is really good. A perfect, uh, perfect 10 C board with a nice added effect um this won't be good if you need something fast right because this is going to create an animation but this could this is good if it does exactly what you need it to do right if you want to get a high combo board with void damage field so uh i dig this I don't know if, if that brings it up to A tier though. I, I think this is probably sitting in B tier. So already we're we're through. We already got two B tier cards in the seven star. Right. 
Okay. Uh, next we got Josuke. Okay, he clears Unmatchable and he clears Woken Vine for his transform. Good transform active for those dungeons that start off with um, a bind effect. And he's bind resistant himself. Very good. Four turn cooldown. Gives himself a 5 billion cap. And he's a cleric. And he hits hard and he heals. Very thematic. I like theme. Uh, okay, leader skill is a 26 multiplier. So he has the same multiplier that you have to match five dark wood or heart. Hmm. Uh, this is a good leader. I don't know how much support there is for light and heal, but this is a decent leader skill. Got auto heal built in. Seems kind of silly considering he is a healer himself and you have to match heal for the leader skill anyway. This is excessive and unnecessary. I mean, it might, it might be good in some situations still, but you need the heal to get the shield anyway. So this is really weird. Still a fairly good leader skill. Excellent card. Yeah. Uh, okay. Very good. Let's check his equip. Full poison resist. Skill boost. And then the, the auto heal plus is fine. You think dual light skilled works with him? That's true. That's true. That's actually a really good idea. Uh, gets rid of move time. Gets rid of RCV. Full cleric. Full HP clear. Uh, this is a fantastic equip. This is just all around amazing equip. All right. Well, I'm pretty excited that our first uh, star finger tier is Josuke. Easy S tier. I wouldn't be surprised if, if this is the best card in the collab. Josuke is easy S tier. Or is this one giant banner? This is just one banner, my man. It's not that big, though. All right, Giorno. Giorno. Man, art's so good. All right, he creates a five turns of a spinner and transforms. What was his effective skill boost? Two? Okay. Three L's. Hmm. Yikes. Poison, triple 10 C. When I see this, I'm just like, his leader skill is probably garbage. Oh, he's a, he's a looping spinner. And a looping heal. And creates light orbs and enhances. Fixed move time. Not the best leader skill. This leader skill isn't terrible though, either. It's just not great. But this active skill is really good. This is a spicy active skill. Looping spinner, looping auto heal, unlock, great slide orbs, enhances. Okay. Golden experience. So changes to light, 7C. We, there's a lot of good sub-attribute light changers now. Charges all ally skills by two turns. So that's nice. Gets rid of move time. Gets rid of RCV. Gets rid of attack. Okay, so this is just an all-around solid equip. Uh, I think this puts... I think that active skill, it's hard to um determine exactly how much it's worth. He's not as good as Josuke, but... I think this is, we'll, we'll put it like, he kind of sits in between, right? I don't think it's as good as Josuke, but it's really good. All right, next up is uh, old Dio, vampire Dio. 
Vampire Mask Dio. Uh, for three turns, 2x HP. That's decent. This is interesting. We don't have this yet, so I like it that it's unique. Transforms. For one turn, his cap becomes 4 billion, and he creates six fire, water, wood, dark, and heal. So no light orbs. So he can't be used for five color. But it is a full board change of exactly six. So this is a 10C board on a two turn cooldown. This seems pretty good. All right. Wait, what is going on here? 23 X attack when matching two water combos. Why is it all water combos? Why is it water combos? That's so weird. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And this is why I don't hate it. He needs water combos to proc. And he needs three colors to proc. So that you could still blob darks if you need to. Active skill. Right. Um this leader skill is really weird. This isn't a bug, right? It is water combos. He doesn't unlock though. Hmm strange very strange okay let's look at the mask minus one skill boost uh bind 7c and vdp um i don't really see these negative skill boosts necessarily as a downside it's just a unique part of the equip i think there could be some uses where uh you have these leaders that are very close to over or uh, these cards are very close to getting overcharged. So I don't necessarily hate seeing these, but it does kind of hurt the equip some for the average team. Change your own attribute to dark six turns. Okay. Uh, Pretty good active skill. I mean, this is, he's so strange. Um... I think this is pretty clearly a B tier. Which, this being the, the BGM, I was expecting a little more. DD Lajoa loves this equip. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems really specific, but it doesn't seem terrible. But when you're that... I feel like as a something that people they want to incentivize people to buy they should have made it a little bit more versatile all right jotaro kujo four skill boosts gives himself 10x for five turns okay and this is one of the like change the world actives. So his is really short, five seconds. If you hit 10 or more combos, then he'll hit for 9.9 .9 billion damage. So this is a new level of crossing damage thresholds that you can hit, but this active is pretty tough to use. You got five seconds to hit your 10 C. It's not too bad because you don't have to like do the normal solving since it's the freely move. It's changed the world active. You could pick up your cursor and move it around. Uh, he has 4.2 all stats for attackers, no shield, but he does give plus combo and plus true damage or an autofill. I mean, he's pretty good. He's a three color. It's, it's he's, he's pretty solid as a leader and he's going to hit really hard. He's got five 10 Z's and he's got a high attack. He's going to hit real hard. All right. His Evo. So he does get an Evo triple 10 C. It could be six skill boost blind resist. Nice. Um, six turn cooldown, 10 X attack and bypass. Eh, this is significantly less good. 
the the base form is much more unique all right let's take check star platinum skill boost greater than 50 three color attribute changes to attacker type which is one of the primary rainbow types that we see a lot uh 3x attack for monsters three bypass void damage shield effects charge ally skills for three turns 20 turn cooldown is 20 turn 20 turn cooldown isn't the average 19 or is the average hold on what's the average cooldown Skills, skill charge, three turns. Let's sort by skill. Yeah, 18 and 19 are the averages you want to see. So this being a 20 turn is a little bit disappointing. The awakenings are really good though. These are really good awakenings. Does Jotaro deserve to be in his own S tier, into the star finger tier? I don't think he does. A decent leader skill. Twenty six turn transform. Three turn cooldown on this. Nah, I don't think Jotaro gets gets to be S tier. Uh I think he is just by the merits of his equip, he gets to be A tier though. But I think if it if his equip were less good, he would he would be in B tier. All right, sexy Dio. All right, three turn delay, so good transform active. Four, so he's got seven turns effective skill boost in a way. It's really good. All right, Dio in the world. This man is hitting hard. Much better active skill, same three turn cooldown. Much better active skill. This is so much better. I mean, it is Dio. So it's a little bit thematic, but it's a little sad that Jotaro got kind of pooped on. Wow. This is quite the leader skill, too. It doesn't have a shield, but it's still 4.2. Uh... You could put a guard break equip on him. You really had to. I think this is really strong. Like This is this is a really strong card. This card hits for almost 20 billion. And it's not hard to use his active. His active is really easy to use. And in fact, I kind of You know what? I I I take it back. I'm gonna he, I am gonna move him up to S tier, even though he's harder to use. Just the fact that he could hit twenty, also hit twenty billion, at least at the moment, puts him in a unique place in in uh, North America. Because we had was it Kaido from One Piece? We don't we didn't get him. He could hit eight billion, right? So these two cards that could basically hit for twenty billion total uh, have a unique place. All right, let's look at the Evo. It's a lower S tier though. And the equip is good. So that, that kind of makes up for it. All right. Uh, oops, all TPAs. It's in the dark light colors, so it's fine. It's what we want to see kind of in dark light. Go with Kaishu and um, Daytona. For two turns, 5x attack. For two turns, bypass void damage shield. For two turns, board becomes seven by six. For two turns, delay. On a nine turn cooldown, this isn't awful, but it's not good either. This, uh, ooh, man. <laughs> hmm. This leader skill.
Yeah. Mm. Not terrible, but not good. All right, the world. It is four colors. So the main things we're looking at here are the devil changer, the four colors, and it's a three turn delay. This is a very mediocre equip. Okay, it's this. He should have been a high S tier, but just because his equip is so mediocre. And his Evo is so odd. He, he goes into the lower S as well. All right, well, that tops off the seven stars. There's only one that truly unquestionably sits in S tier, and that's Josuke. Uh, all the other ones, like Josuke is a, in a, like, a power level of his own, right? He is really good. All right, now we're looking at the six stars. First, we got Yoshikage Kira. Who also got a transform or a Yuva? No, he's just right. Yep. So it's a Fujin active, three skill boost, 24 turns. A lot of turns. All right. Three turn delay. So three turns after activation. So this is like one of those weird delayed skills. For two turns, 5x attack for fire dark. For two turns, bypass uh, damage, absorb shield, and ash absorb shield effect. Okay. He's obviously a good damage dealer at 410 C's. Kind of ignore the tacos. Um, he's a 4x HP leader, 75% shield. He's a scaling leader as well with fire, dark, and heal. Strangely, he's got a similar leader skill to uh, Joseph Josbar. At, at three matches, that puts you at 32. Wait, he, he scales better than Joseph does. What? Joseph at three matches was only 27 because he starts at three, but, or he starts at one uh, X and has to scale up from one X, but Kira scales up from four X. Uh, all right. Has anyone who has a Japanese account used this skill? Is the delay, does that like give us anything unique that we could approach dungeons in a different way? Like, cause you can dodge like skill delays, right? Like a very massive skill delay. You could still have this active ready to go cause you use it preemptively. But there's clearly some issues here, right? So here's one issue right off the bat. Let me take a sip of water before we start that. One issue right off the bat is that if you if you put an assist equip on Kira and you use the assist equip, and then two turns later, you want to use the active. That means you, you're waiting five turns to get your your effect. It is a good effect, though. That is a huge damage amp. Let's let's not discount a five x damage amp, right? It's got a one turn downtime though, right? Which isn't too bad. I don't hate this, but it, it is awkward. Um, is, is the awkwardness, does the awkwardness justify the power level of the active? 
Does the awkwardness justify the power level of the actor? 5x amp and a Fujin. One turn downtime. Two turn cooldown. So he's a very good assist equip carrier if you don't care about the active. And you could maybe care about it later in the dungeon. Actually, I think I think this is good. I think this is maybe worth it. Uh, it's hard to know. I don't think Kira is going to end up being uh, B tier. Let's check his equip. All right, Killer Queen. Man, looks so cool. That looks so cool. Okay. Um, 7C, two tacos, a devil changer. Ward unlock, full change to fire, dark, and heal with a 40% gravity. Oh, okay. This is amazing. <laughs> this is so good. All right, well. Uh, easy. Especially if you guys don't have Van Crow. I This is just because of Killer Queen. A gravity with a board change? This is really good. I, I, I love these actives. Uh, this is 40% gravity on a 22 turn cooldown. Uh, let's look. I'm gonna look really quick on pad db. Let's look at what uh other 40% gravities go for uh, 22 so it's right on it's right on uh With with van crow van crow's one advantage is it gives one effective skill boost, but The one turn skill charge, the trade off for a full board. Now it is specifically fire, dark and hearts or an unlock. If you just need the unlock trade off full, for, full board makes this really unique. And there aren't many 40% gravities in the game. There are, there's Van Crow, there's gone. And now there's killer queen and gone is kind of weird, right? So it's basically if you don't have Van Crow, this is like the only 40% gravity. So S tier. Uh, something that you want to pick up for sure, it just goes S tier. And uh, if you're doing any farming or if you like to do any of the shorter dungeons or anything, this 40% gravity with a good active. And not only that, it's like a compatible active with a lot of swipe farming teams too, right? Dark and fire. So it's compatible with a lot of swipe farming. Okay, polar F time. All right, five effective skill boost. He does a two turn haste because he's fast. Three turn cooldown, void damage shield effects, five X attack for this monster. Okay, so all he does is bypass void damage. That's it. Doesn't do anything else. Uh, 2.5x tech increase combo two for each exactly five connected water light orbs. Very thematic. Jab, jab, jab with his sword. Um, this is just bad. Yeah, this is just bad, Parallel. This active is decent. It's not terrible. All right, let's see equip. Two skill boost and bind resist. 75% shield. This is tragic. This is tragic. Because that makes it more really specific. But God, this equip is crazy good. Bite resist and double skill boost is S tier, right? That's that that's S tier, isn't it?
Yes, this is S tier. There's nothing else even close to this. And it's got a good, it's got a 75% shield on it. On a seven turn cooldown. This is a little bad, but it's not the worst, right? If you're running some kind of system, this you'll be fine. This is, this equip, I feel like we almost need a Polar F tier. This might be my favorite card I've seen so far. Double skill boost, fine resist. What the heck? Damn, Polar F be packing heat. Is this gonna be, so I feel like, um, we're getting top heavy now. These are going down here now. Eo is is a little better than um Gotoro. So I think we're kind of looking like this a little bit, right? All right, Koichi. Uh, two skill boost. Kind of a meh. I mean, it's thematic, but it's meh for his transform. Triple 10 C, guard break, L, three color. Okay, I like this active so far. Fire, water, wood, and it's a full color. Four turn cooldown is a little. Uh, plus two combo for each match of five. 24x attack and reduce damage taken. Uh, really the only thing that makes this interesting is the fixed 15 second move time. Otherwise, he seems pretty average. Full blind resist and cross. And a four turn delay. Uh, what are our, what are the... Delay. Delay enemy turn four turn. Equip. Is this the lowest four turn? No. We have one from um Monster Hunter. The Dragonwood Horn is 14 turns. So it's not unique, but it is full blind resist. Ain't no way that RD. Um, uh, it's the equip. The equip is insane. We're we're looking at like how good it will be all the time, and the equip is pretty nuts. It's it's the only thing like it other than a card that literally can never come back. So, there's nothing else like it. You have Van Crow and then you have him. So super unique and useful means it gets to go up pretty high. And Polar F is just nuts. His equip is insane. Uh, good equips are definitely carry more value than good cards because good equips can be used on more teams. Uh, I think Koichi's strong. Uh, the four turn delay, he, he's tied for um, lowest cooldown. The full blind resist is, I think, better than the dragon wood horn. No, the dragon wood horn has full jammer resist. Nah, this is like, okay, so this is in the average power level, actually, which is not bad. You don't think, um,. Kara, to be rated so high. I don't think we ever use him, right? His act is a four turn cooldown. There's literally like three other cards with three turn systems. Uh, 
the thing the thing is is jonathan is just a worse leo he's got like a, a different effect right but he's not as good as leo leo's better than him and you don't even need to roll one you could just pair with him if you really need that active yeah this is a, he's an a i don't like jonathan that much i might i'll probably pick him up because i don't have leo but he's just a worse leo so you have two things that shiva Driss struggles with he struggles with void damage shields and struggles with hearts because you eat up the whole almost the whole board and not only do you eat up almost the whole board shiva Driss transforms the bottom of the board so it's hard to conserve hearts yes jonathan transforms the top of the board so you can at least know that you'll have hearts in the bottom but that's only once every what is it eight turns for his active where leo makes four hearts possibly gives you a second row of, of fire and is a damage amp on a two turn cooldown now if you're trying to go fast and you want to avoid damage void and that's what the dungeon is built for then yeah jonathan's great but leo in general is just better than jonathan just in general like the active is just better than jonathan's active I, i'm not saying it it one is necessarily going to get used more than the other but in a general sense leo's active is just better um let's see put koichi and b yeah that's fine <clears throat> okay um bukiardi like a is really good and so Wes and we'll probably we're going to tone these down maybe as we go but what i look for are things that are new and unique and i think will last polner f polner f's just great he's the best equip in the collab so far from my review and then josuke is the best card in the collab just period so far everyone else is just kind of lower in fact we can even though like I, i'm spazzing over the 40 percent gravity this can go down here just because it's so specific all right let's go to buki already all right great damage awakenings no skyfalls he puts a, his he ribbons himself for two turns to give you a two turn Ujin. meh and he's got ribbon himself that seems so counterproductive why waste the awakening here I, I get it it's thematic but uh not a good uh leader skill really either unlocks all orbs changes all orbs to light who's sick of good active though very specific farming active but it does technically give you it does technically give you a full set of five rows <laughs> unfortunately you have to match them a lot of orb movement you have to get to get it but it does give you a full set of five rows God, how many moves is that it's it's a lot of moves to get your five rows but it's almost like random distribution would be better but uh okay buki already's fine i don't think you want more than one of him unless you really want to spam that active
What other interesting things can you do with this number of orbs, right? You could do... Row, light row, blue, light VDP. Light row, blue, light VDP, blue VDP. Light row. It does give you a blue light VDP board, right? I think he's really good. Maybe he deserves to go in A tier just because of his equip. Look at this again. This active doesn't seem very good. Like, let's look at it on the same power level as um, Beach Mariel, right? Beach Mariel just drops her own attack it's on a three turn cooldown and gives you one turn. And has a time extend. So I think this is just worse than Beach Mariel, kind of. The no skyfall is could be nice for like damage setups. Can you do a light VDP? Are you talking about with this? Yeah, yeah. You could do a light row on the bottom, right? And then you could do uh it, I mean it's a lot of okay. It's a lot of matching, but you could do it. Hold on. Let me, let me pull it up. I think. It would be what? Um, light, light. That's right, right? Yeah. It's a it's a good bit of movement, but it's doable. It's a lot of movement. That that's what why I put it like you have to move so many orbs to get this just like to get the double row too you you have to move so many orbs so how many moves is it and I'm, i might not do this optimally but so to get the um double blue row There's, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Yeah. Like, so it'll be like 60 moves, right? But you can get this board. It's pretty, it's pretty unique. I don't think it deserves higher than B tier just because it's not fast and that's where you mostly want it. It's a nice swipeable board. You could hit the, you could hit brick with both blue and white with a single active, but I don't know how often you would use this. It, it's kind of like, it's almost like it's just ranking porn, right? Like if you wanted to do, if you were doing something really specific in a ranking tournament, this could be really good, right? You get, you get, um, you maybe proc corbs for some big combo turn that you have to hit and you, you get style points for light and blue rows and you do huge amounts of damage. It's really specific. It, it's just too specific, right? It's not as general as 
you know, a 40% gravity and a double skill boost equip that has bind resist. Okay. Next up is our uh, pillar man. Pars. Hmm. Hey here, see here. Interesting. Uh, okay. His transform does an enhance and void and void damage void. Not too bad. Double skill boost. All right. Free turn cooldown for a time extend, void damage shield, increase combo by four, increases his own cap to four billion. All right. I don't hate this active. It's not amazing though. It, it covers a lot of things, but it doesn't like solve a lot of problems. It doesn't solve a lot of things that are like absolutely lethal, except for the time extend. It is a low enough uh, void damage. Void. So if you needed it, this is possibly a good coverage for void damage void. It could be good for Kaishu, right? This could be a pretty okay card for Kaishu. Uh, if you need a time extend on Kaishu, if you want to stall a turn on Kaishu, if you need a third thing other than a Kaishu. Kaihu? Yeah, exactly. Bless me. All right. Uh, ooh. Okay, this equip is really good, right? This is actually decent. <laughs> Right? A, a five turn cooldown equipped with a six turn duration for 2.5x dark attribute. I feel like this is actually pretty good. Full jam resist, a TPA. So it's really specific. It only helps dark themes, but it seems interesting. Uh, this is maybe a high B tier. I think it's a slightly better than some of the other cards that we've sat in B tier. And he's, he's like here. Or maybe we just shove them. It's a very unique equip. It's got a full resistance on it and it seems like it could be team enabling. So I like it. All right, last of the diamond eggs and then we're going into the golds. It's gonna get super fun. We've got Dopio who will obviously transform. All right, no Skyfall, so pretty low transform. Increased turns, skill boost. Disable team active skills for one turn. For one turn, fire, water, wood, light, dark, and heal are unmatchable. For one turn, oh yeah, I love this. I love this. Yeah. I, I love this active. This active is so cool. Is it good? Not really. It's very thematic. It's really cool. It it like in a funny way it kind of works with the Jotaro. Right? You use this, you set up your board, then you activate Jotaro. Yeah, I did it. I got 10 C. Woo! Uh leader skill is it's a good leader skill with fire dark support eight turn cooldown i really think this should be a lower cooldown no you use jotaro the next turn you set up your board and use jotaro the next turn for your information data download it's probably jojo you're probably getting jojo on monday Uh, 
he doesn't seem that great i like the skill a lot but this is pretty not good and the and it's a really it, it takes dark and fire hmm all right triple team hp i mean this used to be like the secret sauce but now it's just kind of meh all right how does he compare to homage homage is 12 turns as well right Thirteen turns. Homage is thirteen turns, so this is one turn less. Uh, dude, is Diavolo going to be our first C tier? You could just buy this from the MP shop. Yeah, Amaj is better. Like specifically for dark teams, this is good. But anything that is kind of worse than something that you could just buy from the MP shop feels really bad at 10 stones per roll, right? Yeah, and it's specific to dark. It has to, it only works on when you want that sub attribute. Yeah, this might be our first C tier. So our C tier is the Caesar pancake tier. For all of you who love Caesar pancake. Yeah. Barely C tier, but clearly this is less useful and less unique than anything else. Don't worry, there's plenty more. I bet you there is. But uh, I won't hate getting one of these, right? Because on dark teams, this might be best in slot. There's potential for this to be best in slot. But it's not unique and it's very specific. Okay. Oh, speaking, speaking of Caesar, he's next up on the list. All right, let's check Caesar out. Look at those bubbles. All right. Uh, I want water combo to be a thing. Does does Caesar make water combo a thing? Unlocks all orbs, changes fire to water orbs, enhance all water orbs. It isn't bad at three turn cooldown. It does unlock, so it's not terrible. Leader skill is whatever. Not good. Triple ten C. He's blue blue. Don't hate him. He's okay. Uh, two team HPs, water, changes to water attributes. And it's a full cleric. Okay, this isn't too bad. Is there anything else like this? I feel like there is. Yeah, there's just a straight up better equip. Um, blades from Common Rider, right? Yeah, Common Rider blades equip is just better <laughs> than this, as far as awakenings go. As far as active goes, this one has a better active. But blades, you can trade for six stars. This trades for seven stars. Blades from a six stone machine. This is from a ten stone machine. So, hmm. What do we think about this? Does this deserve to be in C tier? Yeah, I think this is a pretty solid seat here.
All right. Okuyasu. The epitome of OP stand power that he's too dumb to use. Oh man, his art's really good. All the art in this is fantastic. 5x attack, changes light to water, 30% gravity. This is essentially a 6 skill boost, 30% gravity. That's it. Thirty percent true gravity. The first one's a normal gravity, right? Yes. Fourteen turn normal gravity. Thirty turn, thirty percent true gravity. Okay, let's compare it to available options. Gravity, max, thirty percent. All right, he's not better than Hera Nix. He does do a board. But Hera Avatama has bind resist, which would be the key feature of this. So Hera Avatama was farmable, and in most cases you could just use Hera. Um 14 turns for current HP. Right? And then Hera Snow Globe is 13 turns current HP. But this is six skill boost. Let's see. Anyone close to that? Okay. So no one's even close to the six skill boost. So he escapes being minus 10 magic stones, Keck W tier, simply by being six skill boost. Uh, I don't think you hate ever getting one, maybe even two Okuyasu. I wouldn't be surprised if this is used in a lot of farming builds. Acid, is this used in farming builds? Because of the six skill boost and 30% gravity? It makes me wonder if he actually deserves to be in B tier just because of how unique his, his uh, kit is. Nope. Okay. So he goes into the pancake tier. These are pancake. All right. Next up. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Either I have allergies or I'm catching a cold. <sighs> All right. Weather report. He creates clouds for one turn. Okay. No skyfall. 3x water. Replace all orbs. Okay, not the worst active skill. It's not great. It's very thematic. I like I like how thematic it is. 1.5x attack for each match of exactly zero connected water or dark orbs. I'm pretty sure that that's not correct. It even comes up weird in pad db. It, it in pad db it says this 1.5x attack for each water or dark orbs. So does he scale for each water and dark orb match? I'm assuming he does, in which case I don't hate his leader skill. 3.8 uh, HP is, is offensive on a 10 stone machine, to be perfectly honest. This is offensive. Why isn't this 4? Why isn't this 4x? Just what the hell? Okay, but whatever. It's a fun leader skill. I like it. Nice art on the equip. Pretty sure it should be exactly three. Okay.
Uh, meh. 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 Okay, I take it back. I don't like you, weather report. You can just like keep your amnesia or whatever. Minus 10 magic stones, Keck W. Alright, moving on. Kakuin. Come on, be good, Kakuin. Jammer, double 10 C, two crosses. Nice, nice. Potentially three. 10 wood light and heal orbs over any orbs. Okay. Damage, so it's a Fujin. Eight turn cooldown. Not terrible. Not great. He, he, at least he's a 4x HP leader. Wood and light specific. There's a little bit more support for that now. Um, not the worst. All right. SBR cross two fingers. Change the far left column, the third column left. Oh. Oh, this is awesome. Hey, Param Chan. Or Poram Chan. Does it, act, it just straight up gives you six columns? Okay, this is amazing. I love this. This is a this is this is a fun equip. This is like exactly what I need for the thing I'm doing with with, with the combo count. Hopefully we get a cockyween. I'm sure we will. Okay. Kakuin gets to go to B tier. Yay, Kakuin! You're the you're the highest rated gold egg so far. All right. Next up is Hermes. That has a lot of seven C's. Okay. For two turns, two HP. Mm. The. Mm. Four more connected wood orbs at once. Okay, so it's a really easy to activate skill. I could see this being used for just like very simple swipe farming. Very easy to activate skill. Uh, three turn two X HP and eleven turn cooldown seems okay. It does some other stuff too. So this is kind of like a three turn fifty percent shield, kind of. It it can be stacked with shields. The awakenings aren't bad. I think this is a this is a pancake tier. Hmm, more Caesar pancakes. All right, so it's not looking good as far as like value goes because our only our our only card that's made it out of C tier from the six star so far is Kakui, right? Yeah. Okay, next up is FF. FF is uh is Bay. He deserves to be better than a five star. <clears throat> looping active for move time. Looping active for HP recovery unlocks the board. Already pretty good. So maybe she will automatically end up in. B tier. Lots of three color awakenings. Some skill boosts. Optional cross. All right. Equip. Isn't great uh, uh, awakening wise. Uh, but this is a pretty good active skill. Not bad. All right. Sure. This is. This is an easy. This is an easy B tier. 
This is just not an equip you're you're upset about getting. All right, next up is Speedwagon. He deserves to be a super diamond egg, but he's probably garbage. For one turn, bypass void damage shield, unlock all orbs, creates an L, and nine turn cooldown. Okay. Or four turn cooldown. I think I said nine. 20x attack. And reduce damage by 25%, 3x HP. So he's a 4x leader. Eh, all those wasted L unlocks. Not terrible. I think he's a pancake though. The equip is good. The awakenings are bad though. And I feel like we have a lot of stuff that does stuff similar. Uh I think this this is a pancake. Yet another Caesar pancake. Badge, I love Speedwagon. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Unless specifically you need the two SBRs, but there's stuff that does exactly this. All right, next up, Trish. Uh, Trish, where are you, Trish? There you are. Oh man, really nice art. All right, oops, all TPAs. Potential six skill boost, not fine resist by default. 37, so loopable shield. This doesn't really matter. So loopable shield automatically that makes her de decent. Uh, she softens and hardens. Very thematic. I like it. Okay, low effective HP, but a usable leader skill, I guess. Five turns of 50% shield. Hmm. The awakenings are kind of meh. Okay, I think just because she's a looping shield, almost all looping shields are decent. Does she escape the pancake tier? At six skill boosts and eight TPAs, I think she does escape the pancake tier. She's on colors for Kaishu and Daytona. Yeah, I think she's fine. Okay. None of the gold eggs have made it to A tier though. All right. And lastly, uh, man, dive or dive. What's his name? What's his name? It's the only one I forgot. Narciso. Narciso. Dang. Okay. Lots of four color awakenings. Guard break. Nice. Uh, Time extends. Good synergy with, uh, what's her name? With, uh, Minerva. For three turns, act three turns after activation, 20x for attacker type. You know what? I don't even care about this. It's mainly this is a one turn cooldown. So he can hold uh, equips really well. Good, co good choice of, uh, Super Awakenings. 
four color, four X HP leader. Doesn't have plus combo, but does have Autofua, so decent leader, decent rainbow leader. Four color equipped with SPR, so not too bad. Weird. Okay, I, I like this. I like this effect. This delay effect is seems better on equips. Because you could use it early and then let your thing recharge, right? Okay. I think... Narciso is like right on the edge of A tier. If you're a new player, you don't feel terrible about getting this. It's a playable rainbow leader. It's a one turn cooldown. So it can carry equips really well. Hmm. I think and this might be better than it seems. It's definitely not bad when it's a, an equip. You can kind of predict whether you need it or not, right? Do I like this enough to give it A tier? I think it's close. The Awakening set's really good. It's low on skill boost, but a lot of these rainbow teams recently don't need a lot. Uh, I'm torn on this. I kind of like him. I like the idea of at least one of the gold eggs getting an A tier. So he'll be our only a uh our only gold egg to graduate into a tier speedwagon is s tier s for speedwagon yes yes better okay now uh we we have one more to review i think Puchi, right or we've got rohan kashibe too okay these you don't, aren't in the machine so we'll judge them a little less harshly two turn delay two skill boost so four effective skill boost 11 wood orbs seven <laughs> dark orbs five heal orbs nice very thematic, um, covers a lot of mechanics. <laughs> heart L on, on, uh, imagine if he had the heart L pre-transform. He doesn't, that's Sag. F tier, no maiden heaven. Uh, ne next run, right? Um, what does 11 wood orbs, seven dark orbs and five heal orbs get you? A follow-up attack. A TPA plus one match. Two uh two matches plus an L. It's this, this is so weird. This sucks. This is honestly awful. Is there something this is good for? I don't think there is, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it sucks. Uh, 
The equip is unique. So he's worth picking up. All right, uh, and then the last one, Rohan Kashibe. All right. Four skill boosts, two resistances, triple 10 C. You'll almost always take the blind, right? Changes water to wood for two turns, bypass avoid damage. I thought Rohan Kashibe was a delay skill as well. It is. This is just wrong. So this part activates after two turns. Both second new time. Eh. Active skills, whatever. Good sub, though. Really good sub. Alright. Three turn delay. Attribute change. Eh. Okay, equip. Worth picking up? Yeah. And it's Rohan, motherfucker. All my homies love Rohan. All my homies love Rohan. Okay, so there are you could just so ramen. It's a ten stone machine. You could just get homage from the MP shop, and he's basically better. And um, the active is just a gimmick. You'll never use it anywhere, really. It's it's just a gimmick. So definitely C tier. Me memes don't really make up for it being not great all right meteorite arrow worth picking up i guess i mean it is an attacker and it's it's farmable so why wouldn't you but it's it's kind of like not great All right, I think that's it. That's everything, right? 
We did it. We reviewed JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, where is Muhammad Abdul? Yep, you're right. No Muhammad is a disappointment. His equip could have just been his little arms. Okay. So. Whole horse would have been cool. I mean, they're, they're, we might get a second run. They'll throw in some more from from this tier of, of from this universe of Jojo. There's so many more characters that they can add. I, I can almost guarantee this will run again with more characters. Like for sure, right? More, we get more of the pillar men. We'll get old Joseph. We'll get older Jotaro. You hope not? No more dumpster dive. All right. Okay. Should you roll in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Can't wait for tur Turtle Polnareff. Did you roll? Yes, I actually think you should. Uh, you can't roll with expectations of getting really a lot of diamonds. We discussed this at the beginning that the variance is awful in a 10 stone machine with rates this low. Um, the art is good. I think the bundle is but maybe not the the Dio. The young the younger Dio, he he's a B tier. So maybe not picking up the BGM. You don't really care. But definitely pick up the orb skin. It is an absolute god tier orb skin. And then we know we just got a hundred stones. You could maybe take the stones from the orb skin and roll that. Do you absolutely wail? In Jojo only if you're a fan of the series otherwise you probably want to kind of avoid this collab Dio Brando is worth it if you play New Year's D La Joa okay that's fair the mask is good and it is like a, it's a top tier equip for New Year's D La Joa yeah yeah you're right uh, that, that is something to consider. Yeah, it's like almost the only thing because someone else mentioned that too, that it's a good equip for him, but I like, it's also a good equip for like the Ina, uh, Iyasu, Tokugawa and you know, those style teams, right? But the thing is, is we already have some good equips that fit into that space too. It's all, it's all about like where you want to spend your money. Where do you want to spend your money? You want to spend your money getting a lot of meh tier units, right? So the real winner here is definitely either Polnareff or Josuke. Those cards are just solid. Uh, Josuke is just an amazing card. It's easily, easily the best card in the collab, which is great because he's one of my favorite characters. Um, and then Polnareff's equip, a bind resist and two skill boost is just stellar. And it's even got a 75% shield as an active. So it can cover your active, your shield active skill that you need for your team. It does change the board to blue, light, and hearts. But if you're running some kind of system or something, that's not a big deal. Um, those two are great. If you do a lot of farming, you need to pick up uh Yoshikage Kira because he has that 40% gravity it's pretty unique um the only other card that really has it uh, that's available in North America is Van Crow and it's not technically available anymore because you're we're never getting Shinra Bansho collab uh Josuke is also if he's not gonna lie I I think Josuke is just amazing He's uh, he yes, he's a light team specific, but he's just so good. He's just a really good card. Like really, really good. Um Dio hits hits for 20 billion. And it's really easy to make make him hit for 20 billion. Easy peasy to make him hit for 20 billion. So he gets to be unique, at least for now. Jotaro can hit for 20 billion too, it's just harder to do. Also, it's Dio. Yep. It's true. It's sexy, Dio. Okay. 
Well, yep, that's the end of my review. I'm glad everyone hung around and listened to me ramble for like an hour, right? Yep, over an hour. We started we started just a little bit after 10 and it's getting near midnight. Uh And by the way, th these are my opinions. So, keep that in mind. But also keep that in mind. Keep in mind when you go to roll That this is spooky. So the variants can be really, really bad. I, I guarantee that a lot of us are going to be going, I rolled all my stones and only got like one seven star or I rolled all my stones and got no seven stars or I rolled all my stones and got no diamonds it, it it you're not if you roll a hundred stones getting no diamonds isn't even unlikely it's just a little unlucky so just <laughs> either be lucky or prepare to dump a lot of packs yeah uh, you don't hit the 98% confidence level until about 5,000 stones. I didn't do the exact math, so don't, like, quote me on, like, doing exact statistics math. Yeah, Amu, I'm pretty sure it comes out on Monday. So, just, just be wary, right? There's a lot of things that are taking up your money, and there's a lot of things in pad that are taking up your stones. Be, be wary about rolling something that might give you nothing maybe trade for jonathan for your um shiva dress system and maybe maybe trade for kira but or uh, not kira uh dio if you want to hit for 20 billion something like that right um clearly you have to roll roll the six stars the six star you're most hoping to get is polar f easily there's just like not even a contest on like what six star you want to you want to hit polar f all right well that was fun